pupil. The structure of the pupil is absolutely essential to understanding its function. There are two muscles that you have to know about. The constrictor muscle or circular muscle, which is parasympathetically innervated, and the dilator or radial muscle, which is sympathetically innervated. The normal pupil functions to control the amount of light entering the eye, gives you depth of focus, and decreases images distortion. It's generally three to four millimeters in average ambient light conditions. This is a relatively complicated slide, but I'm going to talk you through it, and it's a really good one to understand how the pupil works. Images are sent by the optic nerve to the optic chiasm, and then through the optic tract, missing the lateral geniculate body. So the pupillary fibers don't go to the lateral geniculate body like the visual fibers do. They bypass it and go to the pretectal nuclei on the contralateral side and the ipsilateral side. So the decusation will give you innervation of both pretectal nuclei and then the pretectal nuclei send an intercalated neuron down to the Edinger-Westfall complex, ipsilaterally, and through the posterior commissure, contralaterally. So again, you now have ipsilateral and contralateral innervation of the pretectal nuclei, and you have ipsilateral and contralateral innervation of the Edinger-Westfall complex. This is why pupils are symmetric with severe optic nerve or retinal disease. Even if there's no light coming in from this eye, the pupils will be the same size. What will be different is a relative afferent pupillary defect picked up by the swinging flashlight test or a Marcus Gunn pupil. But the pupils themselves will be the same size because the innervation is the same to the Edinger-Westfall complex on each side, sending the parasympathetic message with cranial nerve 3 to the ciliary ganglion in the orbit and then to the constrictor muscle or the circular muscle. So take a look at this, study it at your leisure, and it will really help you understand the pupil response. The afferent system, meaning towards the brain, begins with the retinal ganglion cell heading to the pretectal nucleus. The intercalated neuron, as I said, goes from the pretectal region to the Edinger-Westfall complex, and then you get the efferent or motor pro, uh, part of this going from the Edinger-Westfall complex to the ciliary ganglion. And then at the ciliary ganglion, fibers are sent to the circular muscle, to the iris, to constrict, but also to the ciliary body, or the ciliary muscle, rather, to cause accommodation. The near reflex begins in the occipital region, area 19, goes to the midbrain, and then to the Edinger-Westfall complex. And it will cause, as we mentioned before, convergence, accommodation, and the meiosis. The sympathetic pathway begins in the hypothalamus, goes to area C8, T1 in the spine, also known as the ciliospinal center of budge. This ciliospinal center of budge then sends a neuron to the superior cervical ganglion, and then the superior cervical ganglion sends the message of pupillary dilation to the dilator muscle via the carotid artery. So this central neuron is the first order neuron. The pre-cervical ganglion neuron is the second order neuron. And the post-ganglionic neuron, the one coming from the superior cervical ganglion, is the third order neuron. It was thought for many years that a third-order Horner syndrome, a Horner syndrome is 
involvement of the pupil and the lid from sympathetic denervation. So you get ptosis and meiosis. If it involves the nerves prior to the decusation, or the splitting rather, of the internal carotid and the external carotid, you will also get decreased sweat production on the ipsilateral side of the face. Now, a normal pupil will react to direct light, meaning you shine light in that pupil, that pupil constricts. It will respond consensually, meaning if you shine pupil in the other eye, that pupil will constrict. And as we just mentioned, you will have the near response. So when you're looking something at something up close, your brain has the eyes converge. The pupils will constrict. You'll get meiosis. And the lens will accommodate because the ciliary muscle will be innervated. Hippus is a term that's used for spasming of the iris when light is shown in there. And many patients that you'll see will have some